Hello and welcome back to the Matabazi Celebrity Lawyer uh, Show. Uh, today we're discussing um, the influence of black music on uh, Elvis uh, Presley. Uh, and uh, we have Sal Bashir with us as a guest, uh, uh, UK's, one of UK's number one uh, Elvis tribute artists. And um, uh, Sal, we've not discussed um, the uh, influence of the, the army uh, period on Elvis yet. Um, what are your thoughts on, on, on that? How did that shape his uh, future career? Well, I think when Elvis went into the army, it's very unfair to say that uh, he should have come out exactly the same. I mean, mm. the army changes the person anyway. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I couldn't see how music could have uh, stayed the same afterwards either because the, the world had changed. I mean, we, we'd we lost uh, Buddy Holly and Eddie Cochran um, passed away by then. Bill Richard had turned to religion. So this happened during the time when Elvis went into the army. So music had taken... Uh, a, a different uh, direction but the rock and roll was still there when Elvis came out of the army mm -hmm. it was just that it needed to be uh, accepted to the to the masses so there had to be some diversity there and um, I just think it's very unfair when people say that Elvis Elvis's music when he came out came out of the army yeah. um, well, wasn't as good anymore. I think that's um, rubbish. Mm -hmm. I think he expanded as a singer. I think he improved as a singer, and I think he could sing all types of music to a much higher level yeah. when he came out of the army. I mean, you only have to listen to the album Elvis is Back um, to understand how beautiful and how um, melodic Elvis's voice had become how he expanded his musical taste when he came out of the army. So there were some fantastic rock and roll songs there and there some, some fabulous ballads as well. And his vibrato improved as well, which is wonderful to hear. That's right, and in fact when he came out of the army the first film he made was in fact G.I. Blues um, and uh, obviously uh, reminiscent of his time in, in, in the army and um, he managed to... Uh, well, hardly. <laughs> I, would, I would never say that G.I. Blues yeah. is, uh, you know, is, is a film that represents mm. anybody's army career. Oh, yes, yes. Far from it. Um, yes. But the but the colonel being an entrepreneur, yes, um, yes. he saw an opportunity to cash in on the army thing. So naturally, there would have been an army film after came out, Elvis came out of the army. And there was actually a, a couple of films that Elvis made where he was put back in an army suit uh, later on in the 60s. Some of those songs were were pretty good in, in Jive mm. Blues, but as I say, mm. if it wasn't for the films, we wouldn't have had, you know, fabulous songs. Yes. You know, like uh, What She Really Like and Pocket Full of Rainbows, mm. which were in that which were in that movie. They're fabulous songs, fabulous wonderful songs. tracks. Yes, great songs. I mean, um, and of course, uh, Colonel Parker being the entrepreneurial uh, manager, promoter, I'm sure he would have thought that uh, having Elvis as an ex-army, uh, you know, uh, ex-army soldier, that, that would perhaps end dear him to the to the um, uh, older people perhaps so that might have been That's part right. of thinking yeah, yeah the, the wholesome image uh, was full circle when Elvis went into the army and mm. um, the American people obviously very passionate about their country as anybody would be in their country uh, embraced Elvis much more when he came out the army and uh, you know almost like what a, what, a, what a good chap we've got here and yeah. and his music is now more acceptable because of uh, because of going into the army yeah mm -hmm. That's right, and, and of course, in, in that period, is when his um, Viva Las Vegas um, uh, film and, and track came out, and um, Viva Las Vegas is a great song and always associated with Elvis. Um, uh, I know you you particularly like singing that song, and uh, you sing it very well. Oh, thanks very much. I mean, mm. yeah, everybody does mm. uh, the best job that they can do. I, I particularly like Viva Las Vegas because there's a magnetism going on with his co-star, mm. uh, the, the legendary Anne Margaret. Mm. And, um, of course, they had a, an on-screen romance and off-screen romance as well. Mm. And that fed into the film. But the, the film was the most successful box office success that I've always had mm. at that time. Mm. And... Um, some of the scenery and some of the 
some of the shots are fabulous and the Paul scene with Elvis and Anne Margaret when he's singing The Lady Loves Me is a, is a, is a great moment in the mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. And of course, we go back to some of the hardcore rock and roll Come on Everybody, the film version was outstanding. It's brilliant. That's yeah. a, if you, if you, you know you've seen that many times, but what a what a great moment in the film. Yes, yes, yes very much so. And, um, but one surprising statistic is that um, Elvis, in fact, in that period, um, between 64 and, and 68, you know, four years, probably only had one top ten hit, and that was Crying in the Chapel. Um, yeah, Crying in the Chapel itself was recorded in 1960, but wasn't mm -hmm. included on the Elvis's back album. Yes. And in those days, you didn't really include the hit singles on albums because you wanted people to buy your singles. And mm -hmm. the Beatles employed that line of thinking yes. uh, much later on by doing exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, the last number one Elvis had in the in the States, I believe, was 1963 with Devil in Disguise, and then uh, nothing came about until you know, the massive monster hit of uh, um, Suspicious Minds uh, a good few years later. Oh, okay. But yeah, that was a, a it, it, coincid it coincided with the uh, with the uh, British ex British explosion mm -hmm. with the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and the Kinks uh, all invading America and musical. Uh, direction had changed so while Elvis was making quite a few silly movies at mm -hmm. the time and equally silly songs the quality of the output at the time wasn't uh, wasn't that great right. but when Crying in the Chapel was released in 65 well that's a quality song and it's no wonder that the song uh, did so well yeah. but it, again as I say it was <laughs> it was from five years earlier 1960 that's, that's an amazing sort of gospel song I think anyone listening to that can't can't help but get um, you know uh, affected by, by 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 the way he sings it. I mean, it's an absolutely uh, you know great song and 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 um, you know his gospel music perhaps um, I think became more popular later on in, in later late in later years. I think I think his gospel music people appreciated his gospel music perhaps um, you know, as, as in this case I mean, it was recorded in 1960, but um, you know released much later. Again, the song itself was uh, recorded originally by a uh, black artist whose name escapes me, but, uh, mm -hmm. and Elvis lent his version and influenced his version from, from that uh, earlier track. So, The Crime in the Chapel has a lot of black influence on it, and Elvis has uh, almost copied the original, uh, original song itself. Mm -hmm. And it's also, also worth mentioning about uh, Elvis's gospel music, because the only... Th Elvis's three Grammys, the only three Grammys he's, he ever won, was for his three gospel albums. Right. So that tells you everything. And Elvis was extremely proud of that. Mm -hmm. I think he was more proud of the fact that he, went, he won Grammy Awards for his gospel music than any other album. I think he was very proud of that, of that fact, because mm -hmm. that's where his heart lied in, in gospel music. He really, truly believed in it. Right, right. And of course, at the time... Um uh, in, 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 that, in, those, in that period of the 60s, um, of course, Sam, Sam Cooke became very, very popular, another, uh, you know, mm. a, a black gospel type of singer. And, um, amazing talent. Uh, amazing uh, singer as well. And um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's just great to see this, um, uh, this sort of uh, gospel music being uh, so popular. I mean, but what I have noticed is that um, whenever... whenever well, I Elvis did uh, a cover version of, uh, you know, a, a song that perhaps was done by, you know, another different... He would always bring to it something, something, something extra to it, and, and that's why I found that his cover versions would always, you know, they're attractive, because, you know, he doesn't sing them exactly as, as, as perhaps the, the other artists have done, but he, he always managed to bring something to it that was uh, extraordinary or, you know, uh, extra quality to it. His voice um, reached out to him so many people because, as I said before, it seemed like um, Elvis was singing to that individual. Yes. And there was something beautiful about the tone of voice that he used, uh, the, the the clever use of the vibrato without overdoing it. Mm -hmm. And he was... He, he, you know, the only comparison I can make uh, is perhaps Elvis was like um, Muhammad Rafi. You know, yes, yes. The, the Elvis of the Asian world, oh, yes, his yes. voice was absolutely amazing. It absolutely. appealed to so many people yes, because yes, yes. he had that X factor in his voice. Oh, yes. And and I think Elvis Elvis um, had that as well. Yes. There's very few singers that had that type of uh, uh, X factor and that charisma, yes. that personality, the belief mm -hmm. that what I'm singing to you is you for you and you alone. Yes. Elvis used to use... Um, 
Elvis used to listen to acetates and uh, demo records, sorry, mm -hmm. before he recorded the versions that he, he liked. And one of the guys that used to produce, uh, do demo records for Elvis was a chap called PJ Proby. Yes. A magnificent singer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Had a monster hit with Somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I heard a version of PJ Proby singing Funny Knuckle Porco. Right. And when you listen to that version, Yes. It's almost exactly word for word that Elvis has done himself. Right. And there's just a couple of bits that Elvis changed uh, to make it his own. But right. the arrangement and the type of uh, voice that PJ Paby is using, Elvis copied it <laughs> almost verbatim. Right. But he put his own stamp on it, and mm. that's what matters. You put your own stamp on something, yes. and you individualize that recording so they know it's you. Right. Mm. A truly great uh, individual, I'm sure we, we will be talking about him for many years to come. Uh, we've actually run out of time, so uh, it's been absolutely fascinating oh, and uh, fascinating. Uh, very interesting talking to you, uh, as always. And um, we must well, have thank you very much again. to Revive FM. Thank yes, you very thank much you. to every boy, boy and girl who are doing a great job. I really appreciate you giving me this time. And you. always, always fascinating speaking to you as well, Mabal. Thank you. thank you very much, Sal. And uh, um, that's, that's all. That's, uh, thank you very much for, for um, being our guest today. It's been an absolutely great, uh, great program today. Um, that's all for today. Um, uh, I'll, I'll be back next uh, next Sunday. Uh, so to all of you, uh, take care and uh, hope to uh, sp uh, speak to you again uh, next um, Sunday.